Anyone who has seen The Hunchback of Notre Dame knows how much of a Disney masterpiece this film is. I mean, sure, it's a very serious storyline, and the writers tried to balance that out with a little too much goofy humor and really bad gargoyle sidekicks. But overall, it levels out as a gorgeous film that was in a visual sweet spot that I don't think any other Disney movie has been able to recapture since. I think if this movie came out today, in the cartoon climate where studios are trying to punch us in the feels, Hunchback would have gone over a lot better than it did in 1996. I mean, Hunchback couldn't even get bigger box office numbers than the release of 101 Dalmatians in 96. That's pretty bad for such a high quality film. But if you have seen The Hunchback of Notre Dame, I'd like to call your attention to a few issues. First, the driving force that allowed the plot to happen was the death of Quasimodo's mother. Had she survived, Frollo wouldn't have adopted him, he wouldn't have been hidden in the bell tower, it would have been a much different experience for Quasi. But guys, I'm 99% certain that that wasn't his real mother. I mean, we see gypsies over and over again in the film. They all have dark hair and most have darker skin tone. Quasimodo, on the other hand, is very light-skinned with red hair. Now, okay, I know the first rebuttal will be that Quasi stays inside a lot, so his skin would be lighter. Uh, no, not really. I don't think the representation of the gypsies in The Hunchback of Notre Dame are suggesting that they have a tan. Otherwise, every peasant farmer in the movie should be the same color. The movie appears to be showing gypsies as a race of people with a decent splash of melanin in their DNA. And if you don't remember your days in biology class, to pathetically summarize, melanin is just the fancy way to say that someone has darker than white skin and they have it from birth due to the genetics of their parents. Also, for all the times I've watched Hunchback, I've always gotten the idea that Quasi's mother was single, but I don't think that's the case either. Listening to the lyrics of the Bells of Notre Dame, there were four frightened gypsies sneaking into Paris. And looking at the scene, one gypsy man seems very attached to the woman. He's got his arm around her waist, and when they get caught, he seems to have stepped in front of the group to keep the woman safe. That, to me, very strongly implies that these two were married, in which case we are seeing two characters who are Quasimodo's parents, and neither of them would be likely to produce a light-skinned child. So, even though it's possible that Quasimodo could have red hair, even if both his parents had black hair, depending on what recessive genes his parents carried, it's almost impossible for Quasimodo to have light skin as well, because melanin tends to be dominant and carry forward, meaning if Quasimodo's father were the whitest dude on the planet, Quasimodo himself should have a skin tone that's in between his mother's and his father's. If I've lost you there, think about taking the colors red and white. If you mix them together, you don't get red or white. You get their combination of pink. That means the only explanation for Quasimodo's light skin would be if he were an albino. But being an albino is a really rare condition, so having that issue and deformities seems really, really, really unlikely. And even though I feel confident enough to speculate that the gypsy in the beginning is the spouse of Quasimodo's mother, that certainly isn't his baby. In fact, the only words this character ever utters are when the baby cries and he says, Shut it up, will you? Shut it up. I don't care how ugly your baby is, you're not going to call him an it. All of this makes me inclined to believe that Quasimodo was a child that the gypsies found abandoned somewhere. And since The Hunchback of Notre Dame takes place in 1482, it is actually a solid theory. All around the 15th century, the idea of changelings horrified parents in Irish and Scandinavian countries, places where red hair and light skin were exceedingly common. It was actually a normal practice to leave ugly or deformed babies in the woods with the hopes that the fairies, trolls, or whatever other creature would take it and bring your baby back. I mean, science wasn't a really big deal back then, and people had no way to explain deformed children except through magical sources. 
It's right up there with cultures who would sacrifice a goat to try and make it rain again, because if you don't know, just guess at it until your logic sounds good enough. But because gypsies are stereotyped as a nomadic people who will often stay in places like the woods, it's not hard to guess that Quasimodo's mother figure found him and took pity on him. Well, at least, that's the nice version of the Disney story. Spoiler alerts ahead for the book. It's been 20 years since I read Victor Hugo's original novel, but I do remember that this exact changeling scenario happened because of gypsies. Esmeralda was not a gypsy in the book, but she was stolen by gypsies as a baby, and her kidnappers left Quasimodo in her place. Obviously, Disney had to clean this story up a lot, but the writers already had the changeling scenario planted in the back of their heads going into this movie. And interesting choice in the animation too, Quasimodo never has any reflective light shown on his left eye, the one that pops out. No matter how much of an eye we see, it never has the circle of white light that his other eye has. I think the film is using that as a subtle way to show that Quasimodo is blind in that eye, as he is half blind in the book too. So the influence from the original source may be stronger than we realize, just hinted at in different ways. That brings me to the second issue that I want to address, which is another conflicting part of the story that Disney may have waved a magic wand over. I never really noticed it before, but the last few scenes of the movie are so far out there compared to the rest of the film. Quasimodo breaks free of his chains, swoops in to save Esmeralda, finds out she appears to be dead, fights back against Frollo, actually sends molten lava flowing out of Notre Dame's gargoyles onto the streets of Paris below. Next thing we know, Esmeralda wakes up and then it's a bright and sunny happy ending moments later. Not to crush any souls here, but most of the characters in the book die. Frollo successfully hangs Esmeralda, and after Quasimodo throws him from the cathedral, he curls up with Esmeralda's dead body and hugs her until he starves to death. It's so depressing. And I am not against sidestepping that in a kid's movie, but watching the movie again as an adult, I call shenanigans. Now, we are made to question Quasimodo's sanity over and over again in the movie. Everything involving the gargoyles is confusing, as they tend to turn to stone the minute anyone else walks into the room. Well, they mostly do this, but we do have a few brief moments where Jolly the Goat and later Frollo see the gargoyles move. But... The gargoyles seem to imply that Quasimodo has gone a little bit mad due to his isolation and that his imagination is pretty strong. So what if, while Quasimodo is crying over the body of Esmeralda, he doesn't react in time to stop Frollo from stabbing him in the back? What if Quasimodo is truly lying there dying and his mind is frantically working out a scenario in which he saves the day by defeating the guards, stopping his master, and having his dear Esmeralda come back to life? That would explain why all that lava flowed down into the streets. Yet we see no trace of that ever happening once our protagonists leave Notre Dame together. And that would be why Quasimodo was suddenly hailed as a hero and loved by all the citizens when they really didn't know what he had done to have any reason to like him at all. It was all the dying dream of an injured young man who had a few last moments to concoct himself a happy ending. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed enough to like, subscribe, and share this video. I've also got a lot of other videos on my channel that you are fully encouraged to go check out. Plus, you can find me on Facebook at Say Halo Goodbye, which is my gamer tag, or Twitter at the underscore fanily.